In a secret location on a quiet street in Jordan's capital, a group of citizen journalists are working tirelessly to turn up the volume until someone, somewhere, does something. Welcome to the always frenetic Amman based studios of Syria Al Sham, a 24 hour news channel dedicated exclusively to covering the Syrian uprising. <laughs> Financed by donations, the newsroom is run by mostly Syrian volunteers who are constantly amazed that the channel has managed to stay on the air for nearly a year now. I've never heard of a TV station ran by 15 people. I mean, 15 people is, is a cast for just one program. We have 12 hours of live broadcast daily. And, uh, you know, we make it work. It, it's doing very well. Samar Adluni founded Syria Al Shab. She is not Syrian. She grew up in Jordan and the United States. But she was frustrated that Syrian President Bashar al Assad has been able to continue brutalizing his own people without consequence. The torture, the killing, the rape, uh, the abuse that they go through day after day and it's been over a year and nobody's doing anything about it. We want to be heard. We want people to see what's going on. We want to show people, because they're asking for peace, democracy, people are getting killed. Syria al Shab relies exclusively on footage from ordinary citizens who are witnessing the violence and bloodshed. The Syrian regime has forbidden independent reporters from working there. So from dark windows or behind a wall, citizen journalists hold cell phone and computer cameras toward the action. The images, live dispatches from Syrians connected through Skype, and running commentary from an in-studio anchor are then broadcast by satellite and on the internet around the world. Well, the station is somewhat licensed. Um, we had to go around, you know, a few people to, to get it. But um, they know. I'm not going to say that they don't. The government does know, but it's a don't say don't tell kind of thing. The channel may be underground, but it's been building an audience all around the world. Volunteers have heard from viewers across the Middle East and as far away as the United States. The Syrian regime itself has apparently tuned in as well. We have absolutely seen signs that the Syrian regime is watching. We've been jammed twice within a month of our broadcasting. Um, we were um, streaming on what we call Nile Sat, and we were jammed, so we went to Arab Sat, and within the next 24 hours, we were jammed as well. They hacked into our Skype account about a week ago and sent a virus to all the contacts in it. So every time they do something like that, we know we're doing our job. It is absolutely rewarding to know that we are bothering the Assad regime. It lets us know that we're doing exactly what we started off to do, that they are threatened by us, and it just makes you want to work harder and do more. Even when it means danger for al Shab's volunteers. We were asked not to reveal the exact location of its studios because even here in Jordan, there is a fear that a supporter of Assad could sabotage the operation or attack its staff. And the danger is not hypothetical. Back in Syria, the families of some of Syria al Shab's anchors have paid a big price. One of our anchors' families' uh, ho houses were burned. They threatened that if he went back on air that they would burn the house with his family in it. Another one of our anchors, both brothers were killed. Um, so it does create a, quite a bit of a danger, but um, they still fight and they still do it to serve their country. Uh, just because they're not within Syria doesn't mean that they can't do something about it as well.